Rahula Bhadda. That is Rahula the fortunate. Rahula was very fortunate to be the Buddha's son before Buddha became attain enlightenment. Before he attained enlightenment, he had a son. And he gave his name, gave a son a name, Rahula. But his friends called him Rahula Bhadda. He also admitted that. Rahula Bhadda means Rahula the fortunate. He was fortunate twice. Once he was the Buddha's son. Second, he was an enlightened monk, attained full enlightenment. Rahula also is known for his obedience. It is said that every morning he woke up and took handful of sands into his hand and threw in the sky, wishing May I receive as many advices as the grain of the sands in my hand. Grain of the sand I threw in the air. How many grains are there in one handful of sands? Many, thousands of them. He, he was very, very happy to receive advice for discipline. So Buddha called him a monk who is number one in desiring advisors. <laughs> Many people don't like to hear get, receive advisors. Many people don't like. But Rahula like to hear as many advices as the grain of sand in his hand. So, Buddha gave him this advice when he was only seven years old. That is the time children need advices. Even before that they need advices. But here, Buddha gave him advice uh, when he was seven years old. So, Buddha was living on one occasion. The Blessed One was living at Rajagaha in the bamboo grove, the squirrel sanctuary. That is the sanctuary for squirrels. And it was a sort of a preserved area that nobody can kill or hurt the squirrels. That was squirrel sanctuary. So when he was there in the sanctuary, in this sanctuary, squirrels, bamboo grove, squirrel sanctuary, it is called Kalandaka Nivapa in Pali, Kalandaka. Kalandaka means squirrels. Now on that occasion, the Rahula, when the Rahula was living at the Ambalatika, then when it was evening, the Buddha rose from his meditation and went to the Venerable Rahula at Ambalatika. Buddha and all monks in those days went on arms round, taking arms ball, collect food and find a place where there is water, sat down, ate, washed his hands and arms balls, and then they would uh, meditate. They would meditate for sometimes in the afternoon after meals. Then 
most of the time these monks in the afternoon meditation uh, have Dhamma discussions or see the Buddha or see another monk have Dhamma discussions. So on that day, Buddha, after his meditation, he went to Rahula at Ambalatika. Now, Rahula also is known for his beauty. Very, very handsome young person. Because, the, because Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha himself, was a very, very handsome person. Now his, his, his son, Rahula, also very handsome. Anyway, the Venerable Rahula saw the Blessed One coming in the distance and made a seat ready and set out water for washing the feet. Rahula was so obedient and uh, he was very uh, dutiful. Uh, he knew his protocol, his uh, responsibility, that when the Buddha came, even though he was young, only seven years old, he got water for the Buddha to wash his feet. He made he, he made the seat for the Buddha to sit down and brought water for him to wash his feet uh, before he sat on his seat. So, the Blessed One sat down on the seat, made ready and washed his feet. Then, the Venerable Rahula paid homage to him and sat down at one side. See how polite, how neat, how obedient Rahula, although he was his uh, Buddha's son, he did not become just uh, another uh, little boy, but he was very wise and he did his duty and paid respect to the Buddha and sat down. Then <coughs> these very beautiful instructions Buddha gave, this very beautiful, very meaningful instruction. What is that? He wanted Rahula to see the meaning of what Buddha said. Then the Blessed One left a little water in the water vessel and asked Venerable Rahula, Rahula, do you see this little water left in the water vessel? Rahula said, yes, Venerable Sir. <coughs> Even so, little Rahula, is the recluseship of those who are not ashamed to tell deliberate life. This is very important, especially for recluses. Who are the recluses? Recluses are sometimes called mendicants or renunciant or monks, nuns. These are recluses. But this advice is good for anybody not only recluses, any person growing up and uh, having a very good life, uh, the, the, the future, even any person uh, need this kind of advice, especially young people. So Buddha, after washing his feet, he left little water in the water vessel, in the cup or whatever the container, and asked Rahula, Rahula, do you see this little water left in the water vessel? He said, yes. Then Buddha said, 
even so little rahula is the seclu reclusive for those who are not ashamed to tell a deliberate lie his good qualities will be as little as this water in the boat vessel the most of fish will be thrown away if he deliberately tells lies if he does not if he is not uh, ashamed he is if he is not embarrassed to tell a lie that means if he tells a lie deliberately along with the telling lies what is wh- what does he do he throws away all noble good qualities because the liars can do any wrong thing if they like if they can tell lies so rahul is the seclusion for those who are not ashamed to tell a deliberate lie even so little <coughs> most of his throne a very little good quality remains in him then <coughs> the blessed one threw away the little lord that was left and asked and the rahula rahula do you see that little water that was thrown away rahula said yes venerable sir even so rahula those who are not ashamed to tell a lie deliberate lie tell a deliberate lie have thrown away their seclusion their reclusion now there was little water he threw away even that little water what is in the bottle in the in the vessel nothing no water only the the the, the moisture remain in the vessel so if somebody if a sec recluse or a mendicant or a monastic any person who likes to be honest uh, practice morality that person morality will be almost empty nothing there is a stray trace of morality not the real morality if the person tells lies deliberately okay of course people don't lie uh, in dream or unintentionally or by accident no they tell lies deliberately so if they throw if they deliberately tell lies and they are not ashamed of telling lies their good qualities also will go away and the only trace of good qualities remain just like that pot thirdly then the blessed one turned the water vessel upside down and asked the venerable rahula rahula do you see this water vessel turned upside down yes venerable sir even so rahula those who are not ashamed to tell a deliberate lie have turned their reclusion upside down now they turn their back to wholesome qualities reclusive principles their morality if they tell lies deliberately if they tell deliberately and therefore they don't they are not uh, shame for telling lies those who are not ashamed to tell lies you see they turn their back to the good qualities turn their reclusion turn upside down 
topsy-turvy. And then he said, uh, lastly, then the Blessed One turned the water vessel right way, right way up again, and asked the Vendama Ravula, Ravula, do you see this hollow, empty water vessel? Yes, Vendabal, sir. Even so hollow and empty, Rahula, is the seclu reclusive pool of those who are not ashamed to tell a deliberate lie. Now, they don't have any noble, good quality in them, just like this water vessels that is completely dry, empty, not even trace of water. When you turn it upside, uh, right, right way, uh, up again, that's what you see inside the container or the vessel. Exactly like that if somebody tells deliberate lies, that person, this may be not only monks, nuns, recluses, any person who wants to uh, live an uh, ethical, moral, right, uh, honest life, that person cannot have both, cannot tell lie at the same time, be honest. Honesty goes down the grain, uh, you see? goes down the drain. So, then Buddha gave a very powerful simile, very good simile. When Buddha wanted to emphasize certain things, he gives a simile. Sometimes he, he makes up similes, sometimes he uh, takes similes from the society, and in this case, this really can happen uh, in the society, in a battlefield. What is that? Suppose Rahula, they are a royal Tusker elephant with tusks as long as a chariot poles, full grown in stature, hybrid, and uh, accustomed to battle. Now, so the, see the description of this elephant. He has a long tusks, as long as the chariot poles. I don't know whether you have seen chariot poles. <coughs> when you see, there are, uh, even if there is one bull, he tied to a uh, pole, two poles, along the chariot, is quite long. Similarly, this elephant has teeth or trucks, uh, uh, tusks, uh, as long as chariot pole, full grown in stature, hybrid, accustomed to battle. Normally, not ordinary uh, dwarf elephant would be used for uh, in, in battle, not be used in battle. Well grown, very strong, very big, uh, hybrid uh, elephant will be used. So in in battle, he would perform his task with his fore feet, his hind feet, with his fore quarters, and his hind quarters, with his head and his ears with his tusks and his tail. <clears throat> now, what does he use? He uses his four feet and hind feet out of the four. Then four quarters, front part of his body and hind quarters, back part of his body, his head, ears and tusks and his tails. Yet, 
he would give back his trust, trunk. Now, trunk is the one that he uses for picking up something. Even he can, his trunk is so uh, flexible uh, that he even can pick up a needle, although it is very big, but elephant is so uh, well, uh, he, he has uh, trained his uh, uh, trunk to <coughs> uh, pick up his, pick up something. So, then his rider would think, this royal tusker elephant, with tusk as long as the chariot pole, performs his task in battle with his feet, four feet, nine feet, and so forth and so on. And, but he does not use his trunk. He has not yet given up his life. When he, when he saves his trunk, the rider, the, that elephant trainer, who rides on the elephant's back, knows that this elephant has not given up his life. In the battlefield, he, 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 he saves it. But when Royal Tusker Elephant performs his task, in battlefield, his four feet, hind feet, with his uh, with his uh, four quarters, hind quarters, with his head, with his ears, and with his trunk and tails, and also with his tr 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 trunk. Then, elephant rider would think, this royal tusker elephant with tusk as long as chariot poles, perform his task in battlefield with his four feet, hind feet, and so on, he has given up his life. He has given up his life. That means this elephant has no hope of living. So Buddha said, now there is, a, there is nothing this elephant, tusker elephant would not do. There is nothing this royal tusker elephant would not do. Why? He, was, he has given up everything. So do Rahula when one is not ashamed to tell a deliberate lie, there is no evil that one would not do. When one tells lie deliberately, that person can do, not only recluse, any person, any person can do any wrong thing, any evil thing, any wicked thing, all that person has to do is, I don't know, I didn't do it, I don't know. So the person can keep telling lie after lie after lie to cover his evil, evil thoughts, words and deeds. That means that person has given up his hope of liberating himself from suffering. He has no hope. That is why without shame, the person tells lies. So, Buddha said, Rahula, therefore, Rahula, you should train thus. I will not utter a falsehood even as a joke. <laughs> Some people say, no, no, I just joked, you know. Don't take it seriously. I just joked. It is a joke. Who says that even as a joke, don't tell lies. 
Rahul was very happy to receive this instruction. Then Buddha asked Rahul, What do you think, Rahul? What is the purpose of a mirror? Rahul said, For the purpose of reflection, Venerable Sir. If you are uh, beautiful, when you look at you in the mirror, you are beautiful. If you are ugly, don't blame the mirror. If you are beautiful, don't thank the mirror. A mirror reflect what you are. So Rahula says, so to Rahula, an action with the body should be done after repeatedly reflection. After repeated reflection. What is repeated reflection? We have to think. And there is a saying, think before you jump. Think before you jump. That is the meaning. So we have to reflect what we are going to do uh, physically, verbally and mentally. We have to think before we do it. And uh, Buddha said after this, how we do that? An action by speech should be done after repeated reflection. Action by mind should be done after repeated reflection. So, bodily action, verbal action and mental action should be done after repeatedly reflecting after repeated reflection or after repeated reflection. So <clears throat> I think children the rest of the discourse also is very important. Uh, I think for now I stop and then we go to our meditation. Now you remember when I ask you to ask me questions. You remember what I said so far. You frame a question. I don't ask you a question. I simply ask you to ask me questions. Then you ask me questions. Uh, if you don't ask me a question, nobody is going to punish you. <laughs> nobody is going to reward you if you ask the question. When you ask the question, you get the reward by getting answer to enhance your knowledge, to improve your understanding in knowledge, to, to, to learn more Dhamma. Okay, so that is up to you. Now we go to our next section called Meditation. At the uh, end of this you can see Meditation session. You can see on the screen meditation. <clears throat> and you remember remember this. Uh, this will be only ten minutes meditation, uh, ten minutes instructions, and ten minutes meditation, and ten minutes I give you to ask me questions. In the past, uh, children ask me questions. I hope they continue to ask me questions even today. Uh, so, meditation. Meditation on the element feel the breath as it comes in and out of your nose. You can begin to know the elements of feeling, feel, feeling them through the breath. Now, before that, I want you to sit quietly uh, making your body straight and relax. <clears throat> and you just focus your mind on what I say. Pay very clear, undivided attention to what I say. Those children who have been listening to my instructions on meditation, 
might be a little different uh, in today's instructions. Little difference. That is, this is good for all. When you sit up straight, upright, relax, putting your hands on your lap, closing your eyes, now you pay attention to your breath. Pay attention to your breath. When you pay attention to your breath, after a few moments, you notice your breath is long. So breathing in long, you understand, I breathe in long. But here, do not say I. When you breathe long, understand that it is long inhaling. When you exhale long, you notice the breath, the exhaling breath is long, meaning its duration is long. If the inhaling took two or three seconds, exhaling also might take two or three seconds, or four or five seconds. You don't count, don't try to count the seconds, don't count, try to say, I inhale long, but let inhale, long inhaling be long inhaling, long exhaling be long exhaling, and you simply pay attention to that breath. Just pay attention without saying anything in words. After sometimes the breath returns to its normal length of time. That sound, that is short compared to the previous inhaling and exhaling. So this time you notice you breathe in short, understanding it is short inhaling. I put here I breathe in short, but I advise you not to say I, not to verbalize, but just feel short inhaling as short inhaling. And then you breathe, when you breathe out, be aware of breathing out as short. You understand, I breathe out short. And then, there is the next one is a very uh, important one. You notice the beginning of your inhaling, the middle of your inhaling, end of your inhaling, and a very brief pause. Again, be, notice the beginning of exhaling, middle of exhaling, end of exhaling, and a brief pause. Knowing this point, beginning, middle, and end, and pause of both inhaling and exhaling is called entire breath body. <coughs> entire breath body. Whole breath body. So you train thus, I shall breathe in experiencing the whole body. I train thus, I shall breathe out, experiencing the whole body. 
That is the entire body. Each inhaling and exhaling has the beginning, middle and end and the pause. That is the entire body. And then you train thus, I shall breathe in tranquilizing the bodily formations. Tranquilizing. That means when you pay attention to your breath, without verbalizing, the breath becomes calm, relaxed and peaceful. That is the relaxed state of relaxed state of breath. Relaxed breath. Tranquil tranquilizer is not something artificial. It happens very naturally. Tranquility. That is calmness. Tranquility means calmness. Pleasantness. So uh, you train thus, I shall breathe in tranquilizing the bodily formations. You train thus, I shall breathe out tranquilizing the bodily formations. Children, what is the bodily formations? Bodily formation is the breath is called bodily formations. Formation means conditioning. Breath conditions our body. How does breath condition our body? Breath, uh, breath brings oxygen to our lungs and charge red blood cells without oxygen that comes to heart and heart pumps to lungs and they are there. When we breathe in, we pump oxygen and charge these blood cells with oxygen. Now, this oxygen-rich red blood cells go to the heart. Heart pumps them all over the body, from top to toes. Every tiny little cell in our body needs oxygen. That oxygen we breathe from outside. We breathe oxygen from outside and charge our red blood cells in our lungs. And they go to heart, heart pumps that red blood cells rich with oxygen. Without oxygen you cannot live. And therefore, breath is called bodily conditioner. Bodily formation here means that. So that becomes calm. This activity becomes calm. Notice in that we breathe in and breathe out. And then there is another thing that we have to notice. That is, we feel the weight of breath. That feeling weight of the breath is because of the presence of earth element. Earth element. Earth element has the weight. It occupies space. We cannot see that, but we can feel it when we breathe. And then we feel the moisture in the breath. Moisture comes from the water element. When outside humidity is high, we feel the moisture. When humidity is low, we feel the dryness of the air that we breathe in. So, moisture in the breath means we have in the air there is a water element. Then we feel the warmth of the breath. When 
we feel, we feel the breath is warm. That warmth comes from the fire element in the air that we breathe in and out. Then we notice the movement of air, breath. That is because of the presence of air element. And then we notice the cavity, space within the breath and in the nostrils. Where there are cavity, there is space and that is called space elements. First four elements, primary elements and then space elements. So we notice earth element, water element, fire element, air element and space elements while we are breathing in and out. Okay? Now, with these instructions I stop talking and I want you to practice. <coughs> and then later on I ask
<coughs> May the suffering be free from suffering. May the grief children be free from grief. May all beings be well, happy, and peaceful. Children, this is the end of our meditation session. As I said, uh, this is not like Mangala Sutta. Mangala Sutta has series of stanzas, passages to recite, learn the meaning and so forth. But this is a different sutta, which uh, is difficult for everybody to remember all of them. Therefore, I got it translated and I read the translation for you to understand the meaning. Now, if anybody has any question, raise your hand and I'll be happy to hear your question. <coughs> anybody? Mataji? Yes. It's Brian. C can you close the screen share? Close it? Yeah, just press stop share, screen share. Okay. No, no, it's in Zoom. It should be a little, it should be red at the top in Zoom. Ah, uh, okay. Share. Go to Zoom at the bottom. Bante, where's the Zoom? Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll come in. Oh. Yeah, stop here. Ah, uh, stop. Yeah. Share. There you go. And you can close this one. I see. Okay, thank and you. Mimi has her hand up. Oh. Okay. Uh, Tensha, yes. Um, so when I was meditating, my um, mind was kind of getting distracted. So how do I keep my mind in one place when meditating? Your mind stopped? No, my mind was getting distracted, so how do I keep it in one place? Distracted, yes, yes. In order to get rid of the distraction, one thing you must, you must do is breathe several times very quickly. Breathe several times so that you can notice the breath. You uh, are distracted because uh, mind is not on the breath. In order to uh, avoid distraction or uh, get rid of distraction, you got to focus the mind on the breath. In order to focus the mind, you have to find the breath. Normally, uh, when you don't notice the breath, mind distracts, mind wanders here and there. You know, therefore, you breathe several times very quickly, and then uh, several times, then you will notice the breath, and then you can focus on the breath. Distraction will disappear. Okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Very good. Uh, Nimi. Um, good afternoon, Pante. Uh, yeah. See, uh, sometimes I can hear the muscle, you know, the muscle, when you breathe, you, I can hear the muscle, like, tuck, 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 <laughs> like that. Is it the... Uh, Actually, my meditation was good today. Uh, I didn't have much distraction. But uh, in the muscle, each time the breath comes, you know, I can see the muscle, um, you know. Muscles in your uh, uh, heart area or? Uh, in the nasal area, nasal area. Uh, also the throat, you know, the throat area, it's uh, making some click noises. You know, when it comes, it's like a... Right. But it doesn't last too long, does it? 
no 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 and uh, no problem at all i'm just asking you know because i i didn't pay much attention to the breath i'm hearing those noises you know i'm just checking yes actually when as i told the other girl earlier when you return to your breath and focus your mind on breath you will uh, uh, obscure all the other uh, sounds clicking noise and so forth you you can you can return the mind to your breath which is called present moment present moment is the moment where breath is going on all the time so we have to return to that okay thank you much very good anybody else just raise your hand and then ask question it was all right about uh, sihali <laughs> sihel anaya you have any question uh, i don't have any questions about it okay uh who else Where is uh, Akain? You have any question? Ah, uh, no, Bante. No. Then uh, Ruanti. <laughs> no question. And Yehuli. I don't have any questions. Eh? I don't have any questions. No question. I don't have any questions. Okay. Uh, Miley Javardhan. Mataji? Yeah. Nah. It's Brian in the library. Yeah. One one question that might be helpful to all of us is sometimes when we talk to our friends and our family, sometimes there's a tendency, sometimes conscious, but most times unconscious to exaggerate just a little bit. Exaggerate what? Well, just if we're telling a story about something in the past. Yeah. Sometimes there's a tendency to exaggerate a little bit or um and so how does that play into the the sutta that you I think uh it may uh, be uh, exaggeration exaggeration is just to emphasize the point but uh, if we simply uh tell the story uh, plain and uh, very quickly listeners may not have much interest in order to arouse their interest but they also must understand the gist and or the meaning of the story uh, too much exaggeration will distract the main uh, a uh, story from main uh, the mind from main main story <clears throat> okay thank you bante yes so is this uh, maili yes but don't you lie in stories to make it more like fantasy lie as or as like a fantasy don't you make things up in fantasy in fantasy you lie like no do you uh like when you make things up in fantasy stories or stuff does that really count as lying you know sometimes uh, the fairy tales huh 
people use to teach uh, uh, children certain message, give a certain message. Uh, but as they grow up, they know that they are not uh, happening in the society. They are just uh, mere, uh, you know, fantasy. Uh, if somebody tells them as a true story, real story, then that is a lie. If they tell it is as a fantasy or uh, the simile, uh, then uh, they clear up their uh, ideas and their story. Even the Buddha has used various uh, stories. Uh, then he said eventually after that, I made up this story to make the uh, point very clear. That kind of things don't mean, are not lies. Okay? You understand? Okay. Bante, you, would, it's eh? Brian again. Eh? It's Brian again. Yeah, where? Where is that? It, it's me, Brian, in the library. Yeah, Brian. Oh, you have a question, yes. Yeah. So, what well, I think, I think one word that wasn't mentioned, that seems relevant, is intention. Intention, yes. Could uh, you talk about it. how? Could you talk about how intention um, relates to the teaching in the sutta? Oh yes, uh, that is why the Buddha said, deliberate lie. That means with, you tell lie intentionally to deceive others, uh, to make them believe you. That is intention. And that is how it is bad, and that becomes a bad karma, which brings you bad, painful, evil results. And therefore, this is, these are things that I'm going to explain in the next part, uh, the last part of the uh, Sutta, uh, Lambalatik Rahulua Sutta. I stop there <coughs> explaining all this. In next time, next Sunday, I want to continue it so that uh, the Sutta will be complete. You can find this Sutta in Majjhiminika, Sutta number 61. Uh, if lab, uh, you have Majjhiminika in your library, and you can read it. Actually, you even don't have to read separately because entire tra translation I presented, uh, I mean, part of it I presented, other part I will present next Sunday. Sandeji? Yeah. I have a question I want to hear. Yeah? Uh, if you, I have a question. If you know telling the truth is going to bring danger to oneself or uh, someone else, uh, would you still go ahead and tell it, or is there a better way to handle it? Could you repeat the question again? Uh, if you know by telling the truth it's going to bring danger to oneself or someone else, would you still tell the truth, or is there a better way to handle it? <laughs> that is a very, very uh, tricky question. Uh, I must tell you, actually, one has to take the whole responsibility of uh, telling a lie. For instance, this is a very tricky one, for instance, during the World War II, Hitler wanted to kill all the Jews in Germany. He wanted to kill everyone. If anybody hid a Jewish boy or girl in his, or elderly person in his house, uh, so Hitler's police would go from house to house asking people, is there any Jew in your house? You are giving a shelter, protecting another Jew. 
but you don't want to tell the police that you are hiding a Jew. If you tell the police, police will kill you as well as the Jew. That time, at that moment, you have to be very, very skillful. Uh, <clears throat> so, if you say, you know, deliver, you know that person you are hiding is a Jew. When the police ask you whether you have a Jew or not, it is extremely difficult for you to uh, reveal it because the police will report to Hitler and he will kill that person and you. In order to protect your life from this situation, you tell lie but with the, you, at the same time you must think, I take entire responsibility of telling lie. At the same time you will be happy that you saved the life of this person, person or persons, number of people also you can keep. In situation like this, we have to be very, very careful and take total responsibility. Okay, there is a discourse in Majjana um, Nikaya called Abhay Raja Kumara Sutta. There Buddha has given the whole list of uh, uh, things that to be avoided when you tell the truth. Abhe Raja Kumara Sutta in Madhyam Nikaya. Okay? All right, eh? Very good. This, <laughs> I'm so glad. Meyuru uh, and uh, Dasun, right? This is Dasun? Nippon. Nippon. Oh. This is Meyuru. Right, okay. Amma? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, eh? I think we have to <laughs> close this session and come again next Sunday.